But we're holding on chapter 23. We finished 22 last week. And actually, the Alter Rebbe begins chapter 23. V'im kol hanal yuvon. Well, with all this above mentioned, it's understood. So we have to know what the uh, what the above mentioned is, but we've learned it already, and one could always, in order to follow in the uh, in these chapters where they we're holding at the particular class, with the previous classes starting from koshertube.com, excuse me, yeah, koshertube.com, which again to mention them Latave for the enormous work they're doing, and then with a text on tanyaonline.com. Um, and if you're in, yeah. So we call hanal. Hanal literally means with all the above mentioned, yuvam the yivur hated. It's understood and thoroughly explained. But taste this beer with additional explanation. Masha omru bezayar deiraisev kuchubrich kolachad. This, which is stated in Zohar, that Torah and God are essentially one. Which means not that there is. God, and then there's Torah. He gave this Torah like a tool for us to, to fulfill our mandate in this world, which is ultimately, like we mentioned a number of times, to make Hashem a dwelling place in this physical domain, in this physical world. But much more than that, Torah and God are one. Our one means to say, not like, like we just said, the Torah is Hashem's tools. So I will connect to Hashem when I learn Torah because the Torah is Hashem's tools. No, 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 it's much deeper than that. The expression in Zohar is, The Torah and God are essentially one. Our kulachad are essentially one. So when you're learning Torah, you're learning God. We actually, the uh, Altarev elaborated in the fifth chapter. One could look it up as well. These above mentioned places on the fifth chapter, how the, there's no greater union of any anything or any creation with the Almighty, with God, more than learning Torah. And this is when I say no greater union, not only in this realm, even in Ganeiden, the highest levels of Ganeiden, because we mentioned as well a number of times how the whole Ganeiden, the whole, whole experience of getting the revelation of Ganeiden, is only a ziv. There's only Ha'or, there's only a ray of Hashem. The essence of Hashem, the Onaychi, the essence of Hashem is in Torah. And the difference is enormous when you're dealing with just the ray or the core essence. The core essence is in Torah and the core essence is in Mitzvah. We're more sensitive to it probably in Ganeiden than we are to it here. Sorry? We're probably more, not as sensitive to the fact that we are closest to, um, to Hashem learning His Torah. I mean, we're learning, we, un- we intellectually understand, but yeah, that's I don't why think we all feel that, that we are uniting. Okay, I mean, that's very good. That's true. Ganeid, you might uh, experience more of the godly reality. I mean. But it doesn't change the fact that, like, someone say, you know, uh, someone has to take a certain medicine, and the medicine is going to cure him and bring his life back to him and say, you know, when I eat a candy, a sweet oh, candy, I appreciate it. it. Right, and right, it doesn't make it irrelevant. In other words, so, you know, here I keep eating a candy, so it's, I appreciate the candy. It's sweet. Uh, it, it, it calms me. I eat the medicine. It's, just, it's so bitter. And, and so maybe it's the candy which really is going to cure me. The answer is the medicine has that important energy which is saving your life. The candy has nothing of that. So it's irrelevant what you feel about it. This is the emiss. Similarly, um, the, the Ganadin is not a matter, it's not like the candy, this is, uh, it is, it is sweet, in other words, a pleasure, it says, Nehenin Mizibashkin, they have a no, it's the right pleasure, it's a delight, it's a, it's a, um, it's enormous, enormous pleasure which they experience in Ganadin, but it's still, by definition, what it is, is just a ziv, a ray of Hashem, the core essence of Hashem, it says, you know, it says, just to stretch that, not to go into this right now. And he says, for that reason, that's why they could appreciate it. Because if it was the core essence of Hashem, it's not something which you could have Hanoah from. Because Hanoah means it means enters. Like you, you could have Hanoah something which is catered to you, a teaspoon to you, or, or condensed to the way you can, under, your, your, your perception. That's when a person has pleasure. For example, someone teaches me something, and he teaches it on his level, not on my level. <coughs> I don't have Hanoah. I don't have a pleasure from it because it's way over my head. 
So it says a number of places because it's 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 uh, the ziv. It's only a ray. That's why nisham is yeshim venenin. They have a no because it's not the essence. The core essence is beyond. It's so it's so deep, and it's something not something we can attain on a on a on a, on a level of appreciation or a level of benefit or, or, or pleasure and so on. But it doesn't change, it's similar like uh, one of the reasons again, the, the, the medicine or the medicine has such potent energy, the makeup of the medicine, that's one of the reasons that, you know, it's not about, it's not about the taste. That This is which is only taste, is something which is just superficial. The, the medicine, most, why most medicines are bitter, because they're put together with a lot of important material which the, the, the um, they try to sweeten it up a little bit as well. It shouldn't be totally bitter, but you know, in essence, it's, it's bitter because there's a lot of. It's not that that fluffy uh, external sweetness. They put in a lot of uh, the material, which which this medicine again, pill by pill, medicine by medicine, whatever cures this person or gives him his his, um, his um, many times medicines could really you know, you know make a difference in a person's life. So the the all it, it's it's not about that external sweetness. It's some energy which is there. So the whole taste is really relevant. And the same thing when you're dealing with the Torah. The Torah, how much we, if you appreciate it, like or not, even though it's way beyond Ganeid. Again, just the ray as opposed to the core essence of Hashem. This difference is enormous. Yet here is is is, is so, so it doesn't change the fact that the Teda is the core essence, and therefore when Yid learns Teda, any part of Teda, if it's Kimara, Mishnah, Tanya, every any part of Teda, he's connecting to God and core and core essence level. And the God's core essence, that's why the beginning of the, the, the uh, Mount Sinai revelation was Anechi, right? There's Allah Kecho and there's Hashem, but it's Anechi, Anechi, like it says in Zayat, it's beyond any description, it's I am. It's higher than a name, it's higher than an image, it's higher than, like I say, any description. You cannot, you cannot deal with it, you cannot define it. And therefore, because, because you're dealing on, on a neichi, you're talking about the core of Hashem, but that's where Hashem put himself into. Or that level Hashem put into Torah, to say it better. Uh, that's for that matter, the Gemara says, a neichi is an acronym of Ali Had Alif Nun Chof Yud. It's Ano Nafshi Ksavis Yehovis. Hashem says, I, my core essence, my soul, Ksavis, I wrote it into Torah. And Yehovis, I gave it to the Jew. So when you open a Mishnah, it's not only this is, happens to be the word of God, and God instructed us with this rule and that rule and that halacha and that that this ruling and that ruling, and then you know try to implement it and so on. And I'll somewhat I'll be connected to God because He was the one who wrote these rules. No, 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 it's not like that. The, the, the Torah is God. It says our Ariyasi the Torah is God. And the way it's broken down to so here in this in this particular Perik, in the very beginning, it encompasses. Torah and mitzvahs. Now later in the end of this chapter he's going to demonstrate, <coughs> he's going to show us the priority Torah even over mitzvahs. But here it's still, he speaks about it in general, Torah and mitzvahs. And he says an interesting, in Tikkunim, which is also Nister um, the Torah, the hidden esoteric part of Torah, he explains the Zohar that Ramach Pikudim Inu Ramach Ivorim de Malko that the 248 mitzvahs which we have, these are the 248 limbs of Hashem. Right? So it's not a, there's a commander, a commandee, and the mitzvah, which exists also in a certain level. I told you what to do, I give you certain rules, and I told you how to conduct yourself, and this, you're going to follow my rules, I pretty know, I created the world, I created the whole system, and my rules probably work, as opposed to any man-made rules. doesn't mean every man-made rule is negatable or not to be, or to throw out the window, no, man also, if it's a man which is a healthy mind, his mind was even aligned, if you want to stretch it, with the, his divine creator could come up with important rules, but they're not absolutely tr uh, true or absolutely uh, beneficial. <clears throat> they're not beneficial, particularly in absolute levels of God's rules are, 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 it's his, it's his rules, so they're definitely beneficial and they only bring good, but that's, it's much more than that, it says in Tikkunim based on the Zohar. It's much more than that. It's not I, the commander gave certain rules to you, the, command, the, the one who was commanded, and said work with them because they're going to they're gonna work for you. No. These mitzvahs are God's limbs. There's two, look, we have 248 limbs. Hashem has 248 limbs as well. If you want to go deeper, we want to mention the reason why we have 
240 limbs because we were nivra bitsalmenu kidmuseinu. We were created in Hashem's image, in Hashem's form. And if Hashem, that's the reason why we have 248 limbs. But just focusing on the Eidish, the Hashem has 248 limbs. You know what Hashem's 248 limbs are? These are the I 248 limbs. I don't know what 248 limbs mean. Like, what man limbs? is man. A, a limb. A finger is a limb. So a limb. A aver. A aver. I mean, uh, if you count the limbs of man, the human being is 248. The limbs, I mean, they have ten I, fingers. Right. Ten toes. Yeah, ten but there's other, uh, different, different parts of man Boy. is considered as, uh, there is the Gidim and and Eivarim. Shasa Gidim, G- yes, exactly. And these are, uh, right, and these are three hundred. the numbers of 365. And then the, you have the limbs, the limbs are, I mean, this is a, 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 the limbs of man, I'd like to see a better uh, definition the way of it is medically. So go to, it, there, there's a countdown. There's definitely a breakdown. There's I don't have to count 248. I have to count. No, but it's not. I mean, you're dealing with fingers, but the, there's the, every the shoulder is a limb, and the elbow is a limb. There's, these these oh, are different. Okay. Well, there's, in the man. The definition of a limb. Well, yeah, yeah. There's the whole, man has 248. Okay. And Hashem also has 240. Or like we said deeper, the reason why man has because <coughs> he was created in, in the image of Hashem. So man has 248 limbs. Hashem has 248 limbs. What are they? You know what these 248 limbs are? These are the mitzvahs. So when you do a mitzvah, you're embracing Hashem's limbs. It's like when one and, and, and someone say, "Oh well, I'm embracing Hashem's limbs. I'm just putting on tefillin. I know it's coming from God, but is that God's limb? That's similar. Like someone said, I like that person. So you like the person, right?" A father would embrace a son, give him a hug, as an example, or anybody we like or love. You give him a hug, and you say, you like me, you like my spirit, right? It's not like you like my particular finger. My finger is like anybody else's finger. Or my hand is like anybody else's hand. Or my back is like anybody else's hand. So I give someone an embrace and a hug. So he says, like, what, what, are you, what are you doing? You, you love me, you don't like my back or my, or my shoulders. My shoulders are similar to anybody else's shoulders, so, but you're embracing you're, you're embracing something which doesn't seem to to doesn't seem to um, to resemble or doesn't seem to demonstrate the spirit or it doesn't seem to align itself with the particular spirit of the person because you're embracing something which is common with with anybody with anybody else. But you love me, not my not my my my, my limbs or my back or my shoulder and so on. So why are you embracing me? That's, 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 an, that's nonsense. That's not a question. It's because you, your spirit, is in that body. And therefore, this is... So, so therefore, I can't embrace your spirit. You're my son. I can't embrace your spirit because your spirit is not tangible. And I really love you. And therefore, I really want to get close to you. So how do I do it? I do it something external, which not necessarily is is the particular limb that I'm hugging. In other words, I'm hugging your back. Is, is that is that's what I'm close to, or that's what I'm 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 touched by, or that's what I love? It's the particular. My hands go around your your back. As an example, it's your back is different than the other's back that I that I that I. Uh, no, I love you, my son. But you're, my, the fact that you're my son. It, it, the, 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 uh, the, the, your spirit is not something tangible, but because your spirit is in this particular body, that's why I'm hugging you, and that's why I'm getting close to you, and I'm really getting close to you. <clears throat> and after after someone hugs somebody, you can feel a certain closeness. But what are you hugging? Your the expression of your hugging is just a very physical, seem to be a simple, simple, trivial expression, even though it carries so much important weight, and, and, and becomes so passionate. Or it's an expression of your passion towards the other person. Similarly, someone says, "Oh, let me put on tefillin." No, those tefillin are a varim de malka. These are the limbs of God. You put on tefillin, you embraced the Almighty, you embraced God. So it's not like there's God and Hashem's rules are the mitzvahs. Mitzvahs are a varim de malka, which is again tantamount to this. What it says in Zayir, a the Torah is not a <coughs> study which is resembles or <coughs> something which just Hashem gave us to learn, to know, and how to deal with it, the tools, how to deal with reality. Torah is God. And it again encompasses Torah and mitzvahs. So he starts with the mitzvahs. <coughs> the mitzvahs are a varim de malka. And mitzvahs are the limbs of Hashem. 
לפי שהמצווה הם פנימי שרצינו העליון וחפץ אמיתי. Why is that? So he adds like this, because the mitzvahs are the inner, the, the pnimius, which means the, the, the inwardness, the essence of the, the supreme desire of Hashem. That's why mitzvahs are called ratzon ha'elyon, the desire of the supreme, which is Hashem. They're the pnimius. Hashem wanted, for that matter, uh, everything exists because Hashem wants. Right, Hashem. Everything exists because Hashem wants. The world exists because Hashem wants. Like it says, "Kol Hashem Chafetz Hashem Asa." He wanted it. That's why they came into being. But there is a difference between Chitzoniyut Torotzi and Pnimiyut Torotzi. The external <coughs> dimension of man's desire and his internal, what he really wants. Take an example. Um, I have to go on a trip. Let's say, gotta go to uh, Hong Kong. Why do I have to go to Hong Kong? I want to make money. Why do I want to make money? Because I have to feed my family, I have to pay tuition, and I have to put food on the table. I have my commitment, and I want to live comfortable, so I want, I want to make money. And that, uh, that little city and that little alleyway in, in Hong Kong, to a certain pretty person, which is producing a particular m- merchandise, when I know I can make a lot of money, and I have to go periodically and see it and deal with people, or go to a show, whatever it is. So I have to do certain things. What do I have to do? I have to book a ticket, and I have to get on, go to the airport, and I have to get onto a plane, I have to make myself comfortable on the plane, and I have to stop, and I have to go and uh, to eat on the plane, and, and when I come off the plane, I have to go check into a hotel. These are things which, in, in, in a hotel, and I have to make sure that I have a kosher meal, and I do all these things. But what's the point of everything? The point of everything is that I should come, check in, in other words, get a good night rest, or establish myself, and then I could just go over to this and this, place, in this alleyway or wherever it is, or this shop or whatever the setup is, and make that business deal with that individual which is going to sell me the product that I feel I can make money from. So all the other things which I'm doing is like I don't want to do it. It's not that I don't, not that I don't want to do it. If I didn't want to do it... You wouldn't do it unless you, you, you have, you're doing it uh, the richest Because, thing. yes, in other no. words... You're not doing it for their own Exactly. Sake. It's a means to an end. But to say that I don't want it at all, that people don't do what they don't, what they don't want. If I didn't want to get onto that plane, I would not get onto the plane. The reason why I'm getting onto that plane, because there is something that I want to. I want to go to, I'm motivated to some degree to go onto the plane, I'll get onto the plane, and I'll get into a nice, and these, I, I, I have a certain motivation because something which you don't want to do, you don't do. Whatever you do in life, there is some type of, minimally, or, or 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 or, or um, more than the minimal, and then to the and 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 it depends how much you're interested in, how much motivation you have, and sometimes the motivation is infused with passion. But these are different levels of motivation. But the minim it, when you're doing something is because you have some motivation. People don't do anything without motivation. So I have some sense of motivation <clears throat> to get onto the plane and to check into the hotel, do all those things. But. In the end of the day, this is all chitzon yutaratzon. This is not what. This is not what. I'm, it's not my inner inner interest, my inner motivation. It's all a means to an end, and it would reflect theoretically that this individual <coughs> would live around my corner, and he would have the same price and the same product. I wouldn't go through all that, even with a smile. I wouldn't travel on these long journeys and not even check into this beautiful five-star hotel, and I wouldn't do all that stuff. I'm only doing it because that's the way I could <clears throat> ultimately make my money. Because he's not around my corner. He is in Hong Kong. So there's the Pnimiyutarotsen. It's is my inner motivation, my focus. You know, the eyes and the focus is to be those 10 minutes or those two hours in meetings and dealings with those merchants. All the other things are ultimately just an external dimension of my rotsen. Some rotsen there is. Because without Ratzon, without motivation, nothing happens. But it's just Chitzon Yut Ratzon. Which means the external the externality of the, of the, the external dimension of the Ratzon. Pshinimi Ratzon is right there, those few hours of actual time with these merchants, and I can pick up my merchant. And if you want to even go deeper, <coughs> even the whole business deal could be called Chitzon Yut in the face of my ultimate goal. I'm going to make money. So this is also a means to the end of making. But then even the money itself. 
could also be called chitzoniyut haratzon, because in the end of the day, money is also a means to an end. If there was nothing ever to buy anything on the shop and you couldn't do anything with money, money would be valueless. So you this is all, and then, then right, and then, and also then, even even the living could be. What do I want? To a year also, the year, even life could be chitzoniyut haratzon, because my pinim haratzon to live in order to fulfill my mandate, my shlichut, what Hashem sent me to this world, to make the world a, to make this world a godly place, to make a, this world a, a home, a warm home, an abode for Hashem. So there's obviously a level of chitzoniyut, and the, 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 the previous pinimiyut could become chitzoniyut to the more deeper, and, and the, the, the deeper as we get closer to the ultimate objective. But let's just talk about this very example. There's the Chitzon Yuteratzon, I'm doing all those things, but the Pnim Yuteratzon is meet up with those merchants. So I have to do, because they're not around my block, I have to do all those things. I'm compelled to do all those things. And I'll do it with a smile, to some again motivation. I'm not going to walk with a, with like a bitterness and a, and, and, and a down, and down because I'm just doing this because I'm compelled to do it. I'm, I'm doing it with motivation, I'm, you know, I'm doing it with, in the normal way. But it's still all chitzoniyut. It's all like the external. It's the external dimension of the whole, this whole movement and this whole um, moving or, or maneuvering or or or, uh, or this um, this journeying from one place to the other. Similarly, Hashem created this world. And this to create this world, He created many worlds, many many worlds. For example, from the ver- uh, and for that matter, rather, from the very beginning of emanation and creation. And I say emanation, which is the, the, the highest level of expression of creation. Makkadosh Baruch Hu is famously known as the world of Atzilut, but we don't even say the word creation, we say emanation. Because it's something which is uh, it's more of a... It comes from a deeper part of Makkadosh Baruch Hu and remains intact with the deep... The deepness, the profundity of Makkadosh Baruch Hu, or the deep, the deep... When you say the deep level to say better, it, it, it remains in, 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 in aligned with the depth of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is Kuli Kaidish, Kuli Eir, all about holiness, sanctity, light, spiritual light naturally. So it says the world of Atsilas is, is, is an emanation, or rather it's an emanation of Hashem, so it's also Kuli Kaddish, Kuli Toir, it says Atsilas Leigur Chorah, there's no evil in Atsilas, because it's, it's just it's completely, completely, 100% aligned with with Hashem, with the, the light of the Ein Sof, the light of the infinite, infinite, infinity of Hashem. Then there's other levels, Brio, Yitzira, see, we mentioned these worlds many times, and each one is a descent, a, de, a, 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 a degradation, degradation of Hashem's, and, and ultimately in a contraction of Hashem's great light from the Bria to Yitzir and in the end Hashem creates this physical world why did Hashem why did Hashem create all these spiritual worlds it's just in order that this physical world should be created so they're all uh, there the ultimate goal is this all is the this other worlds are not his real it's a means to, exactly it's a right? means to an end but even this world this world is also the means to the end, that a Jew, the Yid should be born, Bereshis, Bishvil HaTayda Shnikra Reshis, Bishvil Yisrael Shnikra that the Yid should take the Tayda and work with this world and transform this world and make this world a dwelling place for Hashem, for the, 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 for the, for the Divine, for Hashem, for the Shekhinah. So, uh, all of this what Hashem created, and I say, and I, and I just elaborate a little more on the Atzilus, Bri, Atzilus, because we mentioned in the past, these are all spiritual worlds, we have no understanding as we sit in this physical world, even, we can't even understand, like the tip of the iceberg, what even one level higher than us is, how much more so, it says there's infinite amount of worlds, especially when you're dealing with the Arba Olamot Klaliot, in four general worlds, that Silus, it's one of the reasons it's called Atzilut, because it's actually the Samach, is close to Hashem, and, and we don't even call it Briat Atzilut, because creation is already, as it is a creator, and creation is already, to some degree, that there is a distance of this which is created from the cre- from the creator, or even the mere fact that Hashem becomes a creator, as a yirida is a this Hashem has to descend to be a creator, as opposed to something which emanates from Hashem Himself. It reflects the entire the infinity of Hashem. But even that, because it's only the whole reason why it was created is only that in a lower world should be created Bria and Yitzira and Asi and the lower and in the end there should be this physical world and there should come that Yidala that Yehudi and just to, and to do a mitzvah so all that 
in the in, in the in the uh, example which we gave is similar to this very long trip, very long journey of this individual, a 48-hour journey to get to the place, or 36 hours to get to this Hong Kong and set up from and this again, not even in the capital, but very far, in, in order to meet these merchants for a few hours. So a lot, lots of things are happening. You know, many people are making money. The tickets are making money. The hotel is making money, and the taxi. And everything is happening. The whole bunch of wheels are turning. But what is it? The point is that he should meet those merchants. And even though in time, and in focus, or rather in time, in maybe spending and all that, it's 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 there's so much invested in the chitzoniot and that later and that in that um, in that in that in that outer experience in order for him to meet those merchants. But it's still classified as chitzoniot as opposed to him meeting the merchants in order to make the deal, to see the merchandise, etc. Similarly, everything, even the highest and loftiest worlds which exist in all of reality, they are still part of the Chitzon Yutaratzon. The Pnimi Yisaratzon is, this world should be created, and the mitzvahs should be given to the Jew, which is going to fulfill them, and fulfill this mandate of, and, and ultimately when he fulfills his mandate, it is a, the, the entire Seyder Ishtalshalis is called the world of emanation or not emanation, rather Ishtalshalis is a chain. We say chain because every world is ultimately connected to the other as it descends, evolves and descends till this physical world is, is, um, is created. Which is similar, once you uh, had the meeting with these merchants, you know, it gave, gives a, a very nice picture to the whole, all the effort and all the money spent. Mm, and all the uh, and all the this whole exertion. Yeah, all of you, all of you, it's all worth it. Yeah. If you're successful. Right. If you're successful. Right. Torah is 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 is, 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 a, is, a, is an inevitable success because this is God's master plan and He put the neshama and He says it's going to happen. Okay. So you're right. If it's successful, but you're talking about a success uh, a successful person, it's all it gives a whole different you know it gives a different perspective to this whole journey. Yes, the journey becomes kind of suffused with the final experience and the same thing Shiv creates all this for the Teda Mitzvahs the te so the Teda Mitzvahs by definition is the Pnim Yisrat is the core essence of what Hashem wants and for all that he created everything he did everything he created the highest world an infinite amount of worlds and Malachi and, and Sfirot and everything why? because the Teda Mitzvahs should be, should be implemented so everything else in comparison to Teirah Mitzvah is called Chitzon Yutaratzo. The Mitzvahs are called Pnimi Yutaratzo. And more than that, to take it a step further, in the example we gave, we say it was all worth it. It was all worth it. But if you want to say, if you want to use the example to understand it in the Nimshal into what it's example for over here is, it's not only worth it. This is the this is this is the energy. This is what made everything happen. This is what made everything happen. So when it comes to man, his dealings with that particular, these particular merchants didn't create the plane, didn't create the hotel. Is not the owner of the, not even the owner of the hotel. It's independent. But to a certain degree, when we t talk about in 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 the, in the marshal and the parable, it, it it lays a whole layer. It places a whole positive layer on the hotel and the plane and the and the whole experience once you're successful with the deal it suffuses it with the energy even though in the parable it doesn't create it it's there independently but when it comes to God if you want to say it in two words the mitzvahs are part of this is, is the energy which creates the entire all the worlds mitzvahs create all the worlds mitzvahs are the source the answer, yes, because mitzvahs are part of God. The Rivonim de Malka, who is the creator of all these worlds? Who is the creator of this, this world? Hashem. But if mitzvahs is called Pnimi Yisratzon HaElyon, it's the core essence of the supreme desire of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So mitzvahs, this is the energy which energizes and vitalizes the, all, all, the, the, all, the entire, all the worlds. So when you have a world like Olam Gashmi, and you say, what's the comparison of this physical world to the energy of the mitzvahs? It's almost like nothing. And you know what? More than that, 
it is nothing based on what we learned in the previous chapter that in the face of God it's not things are so small and minuscule minutia it's just non-existent in the face of God mitzvahs are the face of God mitzvahs are the pnimiyut haratzon of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. if you want to say mitzvahs pnimiyut haratzon ha'elyon because it's all for the mitzvahs and mitzvahs are the limbs of Hashem so this is the chorus of Hashem and if you say the world so many worlds were created only that in order the mitzvah should be implemented so in essence if you want to compare the world to the mitzvahs it's not only something grand to something small and minute it's a non-existent because the whole chayis of kol olamot the energy of olamot is because of the mitzvahs so the olamot is something which is so distant in its in it, the flow of energy which comes to the olam in comparison to the generator which is the mitzvah itself which is the core of God the, the, the core essence of God Ivarim the Malka the limbs of Hashem the world is providing the uh it, it creates a place for where the mitzvahs can be performed. Right, but this means because, and this is because it's the chitzoni, everything else is chitzoni yutaratzon, which means I'm really not interested in it. I'm interested in it because you can't, let's say, tefillin, for example. Tefillin cannot be put on if there's no arm. So there has to be a world, there has to be food to sustain the person. He has to eat. If he didn't eat two days before, the day before, he won't, he will expire. So his expires, his hands are not functioning. He can't put on tefillin. So the whole hand, and there's so much till, till a hand is created, they have to start all the way from Matzilus and all the way down. And, this, and then a physical world is created, and there's people, and they have children, and, they, and then the person grows up and he becomes a mitzvah, he has a hand and he has to eat. So you have to have fields with, with, uh, with food. And all of this is in order that the tefillin should be placed on a hand. So and what's, what is this tefillin? The tefillin is the pnimius, the essence, the core essence of Hashem's Ratz. The end result. What? It's 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 not only it's it's the it's not only it's it's the end reason, but this is the end reason. Like it says, Sof Maase the Machshavat Chila. We say in the Chodedi that the end action. This is what this was. This is really part of me. The same thing in the example we gave. Going through this whole stage with the with the plane and the hotels. That's the that 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 is that's the beginning. And you end up by the person, the merchant, in the end of the whole, in the end of the journey, or in the end of the step towards this. But that was Machshav Atchilu. That was who it was all about. That's the energy of the plane, of the hotel. The only thing is by man, when you're dealing with the, uh, by man, but in the parable itself, it's not physically the energy. Because the, the hotel is independent for someone else who's making money off the hotel, and the hotel is his Pnimi So it's not physically the energy but in my mind <coughs> it's okay it's the energy it's in the end of the day in my mind it's the energy of the hotel and the taxi and the and and, and the and the plane that's the energy which which ultimately uh, led me to do all those things because I have to come to the mission and so, so, so when it comes to the nimshal in other words the the the, uh, the message in other words when it when you're dealing with the mitzvahs which are the pnimiyut ratzon ha'elyon of Hakadosh Baruch Hu? It's not only that it just it just it's a symbol to the energy of all the olamot. This is the energy of all the olamot. Who created the olamot? God. What what is the core essence of God? You know the core essence of God is the mitzvahs. So the mitzvah that fill in the energy of fill in. This is the creator of the entire world. The mitzvahs are part of the creator. Because they're, when you we use the words Ratzon Ha'elyon, means to say this is the supreme desire of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is what allowed the world, because the whole reason why the worlds are there is because I should put on tefillin. So the Chayut of Kol Alamad, the life and energy of all the elements, is the tefillin, is the mitzvahs. I say tefillin is one example, but is the mitzvahs. That's what it says. Torah is the blueprints of reality. Torah is the chayis of all the all, all elements. And we say Torah again. It's the package of Torah mitzvahs. Torah mitzvahs because they're the core essence of God. And for this, Hashem created all the worlds and everything. So again, in the, in the parable we gave, to me, it's the spirit of, of the plane ride and the and the and the. But it's independent of my, me meeting those merchants. But when it comes to God's mitzvahs, Hashem is the creator, and this is the reason, this is the core essence of God. So mitzvahs carry core essence energy, which ultimately becomes the creator to everything else which exists in order for mitzvahs to happen. 
have a great night. Sure.